what I'm thinking. If I click cancel, I don't want to stay there. I want to go back to the polls page. All right. So, this is a challenge for us, right? Because we've seen what to do and where to put the code if we want to do something after an item has been inserted. All right? After it's been updated after it's been deleted. But when I click cancel, I'm not inserting, I'm not updating, and I'm not deleting. So what to do? Hmm. Unclick event. Unclick event's a possibility. There is another event though. with the on click event is that there's an on client click event that we could code like we did for the delete that's client side code that wouldn't allow us to do a redirect now there might be some there might be a couple ways to do this again so there might be another event that we could do but what I'm going to do is on and this one is a little tricky so we won't, oh, on mode changed. All right. On mode changed is when we want to go from one mode to another. It's a process of going through one mode or another. We can actually, again, changing. So we can do some tests before we go into edit mode. For example, we could verify that the person had permission, maybe. Although I would suggest it would be better not to enable editing if, if they didn't have permission. I'd handle it that way. All right. But on mode changing equals create new event. Whoops. Equals. Oh, it did it. All right. And I do here. Again, where do we get the news about what happened? In our E object. Frameworks the same, so the syntax may be different on how to do the test, but oh, my mistake. It's not mode changed. So let's get rid of that. And um, item command. There's 
as a command name equals Two questions when we're done here. All right, and it works. My two questions is why could I use this help page even though the code's in VB? Because the concept's still the same, and even more, even more specific than that. We're using the same framework. We're using the same objects. VB and C Sharp are simply program languages that allow us to access and manipulate the objects of the ASP.NET framework. All right? The ASP.NET framework is the ASP.NET framework. All right? Regardless of whether you were using VB or C Sharp. So therefore, the methods, the properties, all that stuff, is going to apply whether we have VB or C sharp. So I may have to change the syntax of the if statement, right, to reflect the proper language. But the fact that the property I'm interested in, I'm sorry, the event that I'm interested in is the item command uh, event, and the specific property I'm um, uh, interested in is the um, the command name, all right, that stays the same. Question number two. If I look at E, if you remember I looked at E when I did the wrong method, there was no command name. And Notice E has different properties depending on where we look at it. All right. If we look at it in this method, command argument, command name, command source equals blah, 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 blah. If we look at E here, Affected rows equals exception, exception handle. There's a totally different set of properties for E. What's up with that? It's based on the event. In other words, if we look at this, each event, notice that it's a different class. E is, so E is a different class each time. Details view inserted event arguments. Details views command event arguments. So it's a different class. As being a different class, it has different properties uh, with it. And a more intuitive approach is to say that, remember, E is sort of like what just happened. All right? To report what just happened, it depends on the kind of thing that happened. All right? So in other words, when I try to insert, update, or delete, there's likely to be an exception. So there's an exception property here. When I simply click a button like this, or click a cancel button, there's not likely going to be an exception. All right? So therefore, there is no exception associated with this one, I don't believe, anyhow. Nope. Again, it's a different report depending on what happened. You know, you call the police for an automobile accident, you're going to get a different report if you call them for vandalism. Right? I don't know, I just made that up. I don't know if that's true or not. All right? But you get the idea. Different things happening have different properties, have different characteristics. Now, why do they call them both E? Because it's an exception, right? Well, it's not an exception. It's saying I want you to go look at this event. Yeah. In essence, E serves the same.
same role in each of these events. The specific details of what is contained in E is different depending on the event, because different events have different outcomes, all right, and have different things that happen. So the specifics about like what properties are available, all right, that um, depends on the specific event that you're talking about. But it's all sort of the, you know, the uh, event details, the event arguments, whatever you want to call it. it. It's the report of what happened. So that E object and all these events serves the same role. So that's why they call it the same thing, even though it has different properties. Because you'd expect different things to have different possible outcomes. That's just an interface implementation, isn't it? Probably. Probably all these come from some common ancestor, you know, and, and but, you know, again, for our purposes, um, you know, it's enough to know that different ones have different properties and you can test those. Yes? Since C sharp and VB are just two programming languages that allow you to access the .NET framework, mm -hmm. um, does VB have less accessibility than C sharp? What do you mean by accessibility? It's access to methods and classes? No. No. Okay, because I've always been under the assumption that C sharp was the AV of my capabilities as far as from a purist perspective, C Sharp is a more robust programming language than VB, and it's also more um, consistent with other programming languages. Now, this especially, you know, older versions of VB very much was. Okay, we're going to get another story, all right? Uh, Earlier versions of VB, when I first started doing traditional ASP, I came from doing Power Builder, which was an old uh, object-oriented language. When we first saw the VB that was on ASP pages, all the Power Builder programmers laughed. It's like, this is a toy language. This is not a real language. So VP sort of has that reputation of not being as robust. Is that still true? Eh, I don't know. Definitely to a lesser degree than possible. From a purist perspective, C Sharp is a, a more robust and a more pure sort of language. It also, all right, um, has the benefit of uh, looking a lot like other languages. For example, this looks like Java code. All right, this looks like JavaScript. This looks like PHP. If I were to sketch out an if statement in PHP, it would look like the if statements in C Sharp. It wouldn't look like the if statements in, in VB. Let me give you one example of how VB is less robust of a programming language. VB can do what are called implicit conversions. So if I have a string variable and I say, you know, string s equals 1, the number 1, not 1 enclosed in quotes, VB, depending on your settings, will look at that and say, oh, okay, I bet they want me to convert it to string and then store it in one. Or the reverse is true. If I have a string and try to put it in a number, that's probably the more dangerous one, right? So if I have a string, if I have a string that has a value 53 in it, and I put that into an integer, VB will look and will say, yeah, that's cool, I can do that. I assume they want to convert it, so I'll convert it. Well, that's very dangerous, right? Because what if that 53 isn't 53, but it's Charlie, all right? Then it can't all of a sudden convert it into there. And what do you get? You get a runtime error. It explodes. It explodes at runtime, not at compile. Compile errors are actually good errors because you violate the rules of the language. It ain't letting you go any further till you fix it. Runtime errors are bad errors because they're typically situational. All right? The code compiles and it works, but under some certain circumstances, if a certain condition arises, boom, it blows up, you get an error. And depending on your air trapping and especially on the web, you know, is someone going to take the time to contact you and say, I typed in Charlie for my age and this happened? No. You know, they're not. They're just going to, oh, doesn't work. Go to another site. So, in that regard, 
Now you can, there's, in VB there's option strict and option explicit that, that, that nullifies what I said. But you can write VB doing some very sloppy things. All right, and C sharp is much tighter. No implicit conversions in, in, in C sharp. You got to, if I want to take it and uh, take an integer and put it in a string, I have to do some sort of casting. And I probably should do a try catch around it, by the way. But yeah, uh, the, the gap between the two have narrowed. I would say VB is probably less of a robust language. And again, part of it is reputation, part of it is fact. And sort of the trump card is that C-sharp looks like every other programming language. As usual, right, there's Microsoft stuff and then there's the world, right? C-sharp was sort of Microsoft's attempt to, to duplicate, duplicate Java, I would say, or C or whatever, because C and Java are related. But anyhow, that's sort of how I would answer that. As far as demand goes in, in, the, in the workplace, the demand is definitely there for C-sharp. So um, there's part of me that says it almost doesn't matter what programming language you learn because it's still programming, still got to know those if statements. And, you know, the biggest problem of programming isn't figuring out how to write an if statement, it's to figure out the steps that you need to do to solve a problem. That's really programming, and especially in .NET, you got the .NET framework that's available in both cases. All right? So in some respects, it doesn't matter. You know. Not to brag, but when I, I learned PHP like in a day, you know, why? Because I did 10 millions of other programming languages in my life before that. And it was like, okay, how do you do an if statement there? Okay, that's what you do. Oh, look, dollar signs in front of variable names. That's cute. You know, and, and you know, it was good to go. But because I had done JavaScript and I've done Java and I did all these other programming language, it was just a little bit of, okay, what's the syntax to do this? Okay, I'm good to go. All right. We'll see you over in lab. I do need to borrow someone's thumb drive because my wallet is still lost. Wallet? I, uh, yeah.